All right, guys, so just pick this up. This is the Ronin S gimbal made by DJI. Pick this up for a few reasons. One, my lenses don't have image stabilization. Two, my camera doesn't have image stabilization. Also got it because I think this is gonna elevate the level of filmmaking I've been doing in these YouTube videos. As you've seen in my last uh, few videos, footage is a little shaky, so I'm hoping this can help with that. Ali and I are gonna head to a park today. We're gonna test out this Ronin S with my camera and see what I can do. But before we go to the park, I need to get changed, so there we go. Let's head out. So I think a good idea to put it in perspective for you guys is to film some shots with the gimbal and without the gimbal and compare the stability in both. Alright, so the first shot that we're going to make a comparison of the two is going to be called the Orbit. Alright, this first shot we have here is with the gimbal. Looks pretty steady, some movement, but not really any camera shake here at all. And now here looking at without the gimbal. A lot of shake in this. You can see the camera completely moving around. Uh, it's really difficult to keep the camera straight and steady, especially if there's no image stabilization, when you have to take steps. And it's really easy in this one if you're just kind of moving from side to side, but if you want to do a full orbit, 180 or even 360 around, the first time you have to take a step, that camera is going to shake up and down, left and right. It's going to move all over the place. So definitely the gimbal wins out here. All right, so this next shot here is called the low follow. You bring the camera close down to the ground as close as you can and follow a subject directly behind them so you can get their footsteps. And once again here, we have another shot with the gimbal first. You can see here there's a lot of movement, but it's not camera shake. You can see a lot of movement because you're so low to the ground and you're focused on that subject which is so close, you're able to see a lot of movement in the background which makes for a better quality uh, clip. And here is the same shot without the gimbal. This one is really difficult to do, especially because you have to be so low to the ground, you have to hunch your back over, which already makes it hard to walk. So you're gonna see every single step you have to take in that movement, plus your arms are reaching down, so they're not really stable. They're gonna be moving left to right and up and down on that one as well. So I think the gimbal takes the win here in this one as well. Shot number three is gonna be called the dolly forward. Uh, I've modified it a little bit, so I'm going to be calling it the modified dolly forward. The reason it's uh, modified is because normally dolly forward is you just move straight forward at a subject, mostly onto their face. But what I've done here is I've taken the camera low to the ground, moved forward, and then up the subject, revealing the subject's face at the end of the shot. So let's take a look at these two here. Right, so here we are again, gimbal first. We're real low to the ground, almost touching the grass, moving forward, panning up, revealing the subject. Super stable, super clear. I think this one so far is my favorite shot, just because of the reveal you get at the end. I really like that. But let's take a look at the non-gimbal shot and see how they compare. Taking a look at this one, yeah, there's just tons of camera shake here. It's really hard to do like in our last one where we were real low to the ground getting a lot of shake because of your position, your body position, you're having to walk forward, you're hunched over. This one I think is the biggest difference so far in how the gimbal makes the clip just far better quality than without the gimbal. All right, so in shot number four, we have the lateral follow shot. What this shot is, is you're standing next to a subject you have the camera pointed at their face usually, and you're just walking alongside them, letting the gimbal do all the work. And here it is. Wow, you can hardly tell that I'm even taking steps. Uh, it's just so in frame, no movement whatsoever. You even got the back wall straight line. It keeps everything nice, steady, and it just, it just makes for a great clip. All right, and let's take a look at the same shot without the gimbal. 
And yep, just as I thought, this one is really shaky. You're seeing every single step that I take. Even the back there, that back wall, you can see the top is not level. Uh, and that's partially because I'm not able to look at that. I'm, I'm having to focus on everything that I'm doing because uh, I'm having to do all the work here instead of the gimbal being able to do all the work. So the gimbal wins out on this one for sure. And the last shot we have here with Ali is called the focus reveal. I'm going straight up to Ali, putting the camera in focus, switching to manual, and then stepping back to where I want to start my shot and then walking forward until Ali or your subject comes into focus. All right, and once again, gimbal first here. We're moving forward out of focus and there's Ali right in focus. I think this one might be my new favorite of the ones we tried out in the park just because of that grand reveal you get uh, with her out of focus and then boom, right into focus. Uh, just makes for a great clip. And here we have the same shot without the gimbal. You're seeing every single step that I'm taking in the camera shake. And I think you get the same effect with the out of focus in focus, but it's just masked by the fact that there's so much camera shake with all the movement in my arms and in my stepping. So I, I think for this move especially, you wanna have a gimbal for. So once again, we have the gimbal winning in this shot, and I think that's five for five. As an added bonus, I have me in the passenger seat using the gimbal, and also me in the passenger seat not using the gimbal. So we're gonna see what the car does uh, to the camera with and without the gimbal. So let's take a look here. All right, looking at this, wow, it's super still, no bumps or shakes little something there, but that's because the gimbal can't anticipate the car turning. So you have to kind of play with that, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty straightforward um, and it makes for a great stable shot. And now without the gimbal here, yeah, just total camera shake everywhere. You're seeing uh, every little bump, uh, big bumps, little divots in the road, things like that. Um, I'm not even able to keep the camera straight because I'm you know, having to balance everything by being in the car. So again, bonus points for the uh, gimbal here. So I think some things to take away from this little experiment we did in the park with the gimbal is it's way better to have the gimbal than to not have the gimbal. Just in um, quality of clip and stability in your shot. And again, another key factor is I don't have image stabilization in my lenses or my camera body, but hopefully I'm gonna be upgrading soon. And in the upgrade of the camera mixed with the gimbal, that's just gonna make the shots and clips that I'm able to do even better, making the quality of my content that much better that I'm putting out here for you guys on YouTube. But for now, I just gotta stick with the gear that I have. Well, except for the, you know, the gimbal that I just bought, but I had gift cards, so that's why I bought that, so. So I think I'm gonna be taking this along on all of my adventures from here on out. I don't see a reason why I wouldn't bring it out if it's producing a better quality image. And one of the best things about this gimbal is it's not specific to my model and brand of camera. It'll work with a Nikon, it'll work with a Canon, it'll work with Sony. So whatever camera I end up getting and upgrading to in the future, it'll work with that and I won't have to buy new equipment. All right guys, I think that's gonna do it. So uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, water your plants, you know, all the stuff that YouTubers say. If you have any ideas for new videos or stuff that you wanna see from me, go ahead and uh, put it down there in the comments and uh, let me know, I'd love to hear from you guys. All right, everyone, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Why, why does your face look like that? I was cold and sad. Why were you sad? Because I was cold. That, what? <laughs> Molly, what are you doing? Molly, why are you right here? Why are you right here? Little bit of wicked biscuit. Why are you here? Did you just realize that your pants are on backwards? Mm-hmm. How, how long have you been wearing them? Since I got home at four. <laughs>